Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Medical experts give mixed views on Health Ministry's animal therapy program. Multi-million dollar project announced to improve Jamaica's health system. And later in sports, World Cup champions Germany stunned by Japan in opening game. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pullen. Here are the details. Medical experts are expressing mixed views about the health ministry's plan to use animal therapy to help in the recovery of sick children. It's part of a new program the health ministry's plan to the ministry plans to begin next month, but some health professionals say not so fast. On Tuesday, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton announced a new project to use Animal Assisted Intervention, AAI, to help sick children recover. Dr. Tufton says the project will begin this Christmas at the Boston Mantia Hospital for Children. Several animals will be used in the project, Madam Speaker. But today, I would like to introduce our brand ambassador for the Animal Assisted Program, and we call him Dr. Teddy Barks, or Teddy for short. And Madam Speaker, he's right up there in the gallery if our members just cast their head up. This is our ambassador for the Animal Assistance Recovery Program. Consultant psychiatrist Dr. Earl Wright is of the view that this is a good initiative. Well, it, it's difficult to give an exact um, outcome. It depends on how well the, the level of stress and it's, it can be difficult to measure, but outcome studies have been done elsewhere and have been proven to be successful. In other hospital settings, it has, in, it has proven to reduce stress responses and improve general outcomes. But former president of the Nurses Association of Jamaica, Janet Corfar, says based on our Jamaican culture, she doesn't think this will work. I am not sure, Shamela, what they were thinking. I do not see our children as um, embracing this kind of this, this kind of thing. If we were in a culture that children embraced animals and were accustomed to having animals around them and all this kind of thing, I think it would work. But presently, I do not see that as a part of our of, of our training with our children. But Dr. Wright argued that this is a well-recognized modality used worldwide. I think it's an excellent move. It's a move that will help in the long run in decreasing the damage to organs and damage to mental health that high levels of stress causes, especially with children and also eventually with adults in releasing reducing the stress response in stressful situations in a hospital. Mrs. Squarefar thinks the Minister of Health needs to go back to the drawing table. I probably think that may be more integration of persons outside coming in and giving some assistance to our kids, some kind of therapy to the kids. Shamela Pullen, TVJ News. In the meantime, the health ministry is moving ahead with an electronic health record management system, EHR, for public health facilities. It's part of a multi-billion dollar project to improve the health system. In 2018, Jamaica received 50 million U.S. dollars from the Inter-America Development Bank to help strengthen the health system's response to non-communicable diseases. A portion of this sum has been applied to the acquisition of an electronic health record, EHR management system. The EHR management system seeks to link health centers and hospitals across the island using technology. What it means is that we are now using technology or certainly embarking on a process where a patient in Westmoreland having an accident that requires care in the university or Spanish town or somewhere else, they can actually take the information including x-rays upload it in the system in Westmoreland and it reaches to the point of the specialist in real time. So not only is that facilitating faster transaction and response, that patient could actually be treated remotely. So far, an 8.4 million US dollar contract has been signed with Flow Jamaica, linking over 100 hospitals and health centers with the eGov data center. 
A five million US dollar contract has also been approved with the UK based Phoenix Partnership to implement the electronic system. Opposition members lauded the move, but they had questions. The provider, um, Flow Jamaica, does not have that coverage right across the island to give a seamless integration of the system. When is it that they're going to do and what is part of their strategy based on the, the, um, the contract you have signed with them? The government has been working to create a uh, much more wide-scale internet connectivity. Minister Vaz had announced recently a new initiative which is going to literally using satellite technology cover the entire country. So I wouldn't worry about that. I think the government has that under control. Also, security concerns. As has happened and is happening across the world, where hackers get into a system, hackers get into a system and lock out the, 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 the primary providers of that system. This entity which has emerged, we believe, uh, has the requisite experience and the, 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 the requirement for the system is that a very rigid uh, security measures are put in place for data protection. MP for St. Anne Southeastern, Lisa Hanna, also raised questions about the impact on emergency room treatment, eliminating improper diagnosis, and triaging at hospitals. Dr. Tufton insists the system will increase efficiency, but admitted that emergency services will need major improvements before the impact can be seen there. School principals have been complaining that the $150 for cooked meals for PATH beneficiaries is inadequate. They say the rise in inflation, the program can, with the rise in inflation, the program cannot continue without an increase. The education minister responded during an interview this morning. O'Shane Masters reports. Speaking on the morning agenda on Power 106, Education Minister Favel Williams says an interministerial conversation will have to be had before any decision can be taken on an increase in allocations under the PATH program in schools. Um, going forward, it's a question of, of budget space in order to deal with the current students that are on the program. Um, and any expansion, of course, I would still even increase uh, that budget space even more. So that's a conversation that has to be had at the highest level. Currently, $5.5 billion have been allocated for the school feeding program, which works out to $150 per student. Education Minister Favel Williams says if there is to be a 100% increase, which some principals are calling for, then an additional $4 billion would have to be allocated. That would take the total spend of the school feeding program to some $10 billion annually. It's why she says any further expansion of a program must be done through the cabinet. But principals are adamant that something needs to be done to address a significant shortfall. They say currently what obtains is that money is collected in auxiliary fees or parent contributions, which the ministry is against, are diverted to assist in paying for the lunches. We literally had to use parent contribution to bail out our canteen because um, unlike some schools, I did hear the minister saying on another program yesterday that um, at some schools, um, the, the talk shop staff and so on are paid by the government. In our case, our operations are fully funded by the talk shop um, sales. Uh, not one member of our team um, in the canteen or talk shop is on government sub subvention. Um, the one hundred and fifty dollars was never was never enough to deal with. Um, and with inflation being what it is, cost of living has gone up significantly. It is worth nothing. On that matter, there were protests and a minister policy on the payment of auxiliary fees a few years ago. If parents have the wherewithal to pay, they should pay it. But they, we, we are not for a blanket mandatory uh, statement on fees, different types of fees, whatever the name is that you call it, on our parents. A vulnerable road users initiative has been launched to help reduce road fatalities in Jamaica. This comes as the country recorded over 400 road fatalities so far this year. Kodian Barrett reports. 
Accident analyst statistician Kemisha Dixon from the Jamaica Road Safety Unit is imploring Jamaicans to start obeying the Road Safety Act. This, she says, will reduce the number of road fatalities in Jamaica. We are encouraging um, motorists and drivers, bikers, motorcycles to be safe, use the road safely out there, be vigilant and also cut your speed. We realize that the main cause of fatalities here in Jamaica has to do with speeding and if drivers can just adhere to the speed limit and obey it, then the level of fatality can be reduced. Meanwhile, mechanical inspector and trainer Clinton O'Connor says this initiative was to tackle pedal cyclists who are categorized as part of the most vulnerable road users. Mr. O'Connor says a special emphasis was placed on educating this group of society. We believe that corporate Jamaica can make a big difference and a big dent in the um, large number of fatalities that we have on the road if they would expose their, their drivers to more constructive training. He added that all citizens should take responsibility for their actions, especially heading into the busy Christmas season. Every road user, I'm appealing to you to become more conscious of your surrounding, become conscious of your responsibility out there and to seek to help others who might not have equal information and exposure um, to the um, situations out there. Um, if you can do that and be your brother's keeper, so to speak, then we are going to have a safer roadway. His sentiments are shared by Ms. Dixon, who outlined a few road safety tips. Pedestrians, from once you're traversing the road within night, wear a bright color clothing. Motorists ensure that the drivers and passengers are wearing a seat belt and also just obey the speed limit. And national cyclist Brandon Baker says this initiative has made him more aware of road safety protocols. What's the greatest lesson you learned today from this exercise? Well, basically, the blind spots, um, I thought that there was basically like different ways that the driver could see us at points, but learning that there are blind spots in places that I didn't really know kind of opened my eyes a bit. Cody Ann Barrett, TVJ News. For the latest in the world of finance, here is Cody Ann Barrett with the Business Minute. Grace Kennedy has handpicked a few export products that it sees as having the potential to double sales and is devising a market plan around that goal for 2030. GK plans to add more than 20% to the 45% of revenues and 47% of profits it currently earns from markets overseas. This follows the announcement of plans by the group to grow exports to 50% within the next three years. In business overseas, technology company HP is downsizing. The company announced Tuesday it will lay off thousands of workers over the next three years. HP is the latest tech company to announce major cuts as concerns about the economy grow. The computer maker also disclosed its quarterly earnings dropped 11% compared with earnings a year ago. HP has a global workforce of about 51,000 employees. It expects to reduce this number by four to 6,000 by 2025. That's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. And here's a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In this evening's health report, we look at the flu vaccine. Flu-like illnesses are very similar to COVID-19 Omicron infection. And so it is incumbent on all doctors to be aware of the possibility of the arrival of flu along with Omicron. And therefore, my recommendation really is that all persons with flu-like illnesses should get a COVID-19 test to ensure that at least you rule out COVID-19. Because, let me emphasize that COVID, that the flu, COVID-19 is not the flu. That's the health report in primetime news at seven. And you know for today's health living tip, Relax. Shots are more painful when a muscle is tense. Make a game plan. Decide which arm will receive the injection. Make sure to drink water before and after the vaccination. And ask your healthcare provider about taking pain medications. 
And it's now time for the top regional and international stories. In the region, the St. Lucia government has announced that it will pay former non-unionized employees of the Antigua-based Layette Airlines severance and other termination benefits, this after the regional airline collapsed in 2020. According to St. Lucia's Prime Minister, the long-standing issue of termination benefits to the Layette limited workers will be settled. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report with Renardo Brown.